Now that we're back and the boat is cleaned up, the fish are in the fridge and clean, I wanted to kind of recap what we did today because I went on three lake fishing trips all using the same gear. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to show you that you don't really have to have a a thousand dollars worth of gear you know to go catch fish on different bodies of water 60 feet back on the flat lining uh, rod no more than 60 feet and i don't go in more than 60 feet because 60 feet works and the further you go the more opportunity you give the fish to to throw the hook on the down riggers 40 feet down or 40 feet back from the ball and i do that for trout kokanee and salmon 40 feet back from the ball and then you have to find the depth of, of the fish or where the fish are at. So if the fish are at 50 feet, you want to be at 40. If the fish are at 30 feet, you want to be at 20, 25. So you want your presentation above the fish. Um, all the gear that I used was the same gear, same rods, same lines, same flashers, same hoochies on all three different bodies of water, and they all caught fish. The fish were not hitting when I was down under 1.5 miles per hour. And so once I bumped it up to 1.7, 1.73, boom, we were getting hit right away. Now that could be because, you know, you're speeding it up, so you're changing the presentation. Uh, you know, might be spinning a little faster, moving a little faster, obviously. Uh, but nonetheless, that is the speed that the fish were hitting. I don't have any problem with fish being afraid of the gas motor, making noise, um, being... You know, and sometimes the justification to go back further is because, you know, of the noise of the boat and the noise of the gas motor. I've never experienced that. Just wanted to cover everything that we did in the last uh, few trips uh, to try to help you. Um, well, actually, to try to, you know, show you what I do. So, I think that's about it. I'll see you on the water. It is 6.36 a.m. And the sun is rising up over the mountain. And what a beautiful day. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? It is gorgeous out here. Thank you for joining me for another episode on Northwest Fishing Fanatics Lake Fishing Adventures with Gene. That's me, your humble host. I am alone today. I am alone today. No, I am solo today. There you go. I am solo today because if you were watching my last video, you know that I came down with a cold for the last 10 days or so. And uh, I had passed that off to my wife. She was supposed to be here with me this morning. But you know, being the kind, loving, sharing person that I am, I had to share my virus with her. So I hope she appreciates it. She got up this morning, didn't feel well, so she stayed at home. Uh, it's 6.37 or 6.38 right now. And let me tell you, I hit the road at about 4.30. And you know, it's an hour and a half drive from my Cowlitz property. And I feel like I should have been here at 4.30 because the it was getting light, you know, it was, it was... Anyway, I feel like I'm late this morning. So why am I rambling on? Let's get going. We're here. I am going to head this direction because I just feel good about that direction. And there's already like 15 boats here. So, man, I'm a late starter. Let's go. The last video that I made uh, was on um, American Lake a couple days ago, and I made a, a comment that I use the I start off with the same technique and the same gear for trout and kokanee, no matter where I go, and then I work from there because there are different variations that work. So I am going to start with the exact same setups that I did on American Lake, and we're going to catch kokanee here using the same exact thing, same speeds. Uh, same distance behind the boat, same depth on the downrigger, same setups, and same line, same everything. Now, just like before, I'm going to put a couple of these maggots on each hook. You know, it's amazing how much these things swell up. Of course, in order to find out how much they swell up, you have to have it out there for a while, which is not good because that means you haven't caught a fish on it yet. Yeah, I kind of feel like I should have left the house at two o'clock this morning because when I got up, you know, I never get up that early unless I'm going fishing or hunting. Um, and I got up at four, four o'clock and by the time 4.30 came around, it was, 
it was already getting, it was already light out. Crazy. And we're gonna start off at 20 feet. Seems like a good number. 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, we're fishing. Okay, the downrigger rod is down on tw a 20. It's at 20 feet. This one's going back. We're gonna go back 60 on this one. Just like we did on Alder, just like we do on American. I'm marking fish here at 40 feet. Forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. We got to go down sixty. Sixty. Okay. Okay. So we're back sixty feet on the surface, with no weight on the dropper rig, and twenty feet on the downrigger. Marking a big school of fish at fifty feet. Kind of makes me think I should go down. Let's go down and get them. We're down to forty. We're doing 1.67 miles an hour. Oh, fish right there. Oh, oh, where'd he go? Oh, he was on there. Oh, come on back. All right, we've been here for three minutes. Already had a hit on that rod, the downrigger rod, at 40 feet. He didn't stick. Fish, 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 fish. There we go. So we've been here like five minutes now and I've already missed two fish. Ooh, a little bit of, ooh, ooh. Wow, okay. This guy's taking some drag. I better loosen up. Wow, this guy's putting up a fight. <laughs> so the last time I was here on Merwin, it was January. And the fish were a little bit small. They were only about nine inches, 10 inches. I think they've grown because this guy is This guy's putting up one heck of a fight. Actually, I've already had like five hits already. Ooh, ooh. And of course, this one, like I said, was on the downrigger at 40 feet. Wow, look at those, look at that, look at that. That's, whoa, okay. Liking it. Oh yeah, baby, on the surface back there. Come on. net. Oh, missed him, missed him, missed him, missed him. He's inside the downrigger now. Oh no, it's a catastrophe. Oh yes, we got him. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kokanee. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, what's going on here is that fish had both hooks in his mouth. Look at that bad boy, huh? It's not a big salmon or a 40 pound halibut, but these kokanee, these things are awesome. They eat well, they smoke up great, and man, they fight pretty good. Look at that bad boy, huh? That's not bad. And as I mentioned, same rig on alder, same rigs on American Lake for trout, and this setup works for trout and kokanee no matter where you go. That was fun. And I think I have a fish on there. Yep, there's a fish on there. Yep, he's there. I don't remember what you call these, pike minnows? Is that what that is? I don't remember what these are. I know that I don't want to keep it, and I don't want to kill it. There's no reason to kill it, is there? See ya. Now, since, um, since the majority of strikes that I've got and fish that I've got have come on the downrigger rod at 40 feet, uh, I'm going to go with this cannonball. It's a two ounce cannonball from the one ounce. Go a little bit deeper with this rod too. Okay, we are cruising a 1.7. Oh, there's fish. Let's get him. Oh, another nice one. 
So I was at 1.4, 1.5, and uh, since I caught the other fish, caught the last fish at 1.7, I bumped the speed up and bam, 1.7, 1.71 on the speed. Oh, looking good back there. Come on. Come on, Mr. Kokanee. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where is, where's he going? Where's he going? Come on. Man, they sure are beautiful, shiny fish, aren't they? Let's get them up. Let's get them up in the net. Come on. Come on. There we go. Got them. Keep an eye on that rod for me, will you? Another, another beautiful kokanee. Oh, another one. Oh, it just came off. Oh, fish broke it off. Here we go. There we go. Woo, baby, yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Into the net. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, no. Hit the... Oh, okay. That was a mistake, wasn't it? There we go. You see what I did? I accidentally hit the... I hit the switch, the toggle switch on the downrigger with my with the with the net pole. <laughs> there you go. Kokanee number three. So if uh, there's a big school down there, and I'm doing 1.57, and let me bump it up to 1.7. Let me bump the speed up. 1.73, 1.70, one 1.71. Let's see if that. Let's see if that's actually the speed they want. That has been the speed that has worked. There it is, right there, fish air, 1.72. Soon as I hit 1.71, fish on. Oh yeah, come on baby. Oh, a double. I got myself a double. Now I'm gonna slow it down. Oh man, I got myself a double. Okay, I gotta get this fish up. Ooh, he's jumping back there. I think the other one came off. Uh, This one here is, uh, looks like he's hooked a little sideways. That's why he's fighting so hard. Get away from the downrigger, baby. Come on, into the net. There we go, yes. This fish had one hook in its fin and the other one in its jaw. Man, I just got hammered on that rod. right there. Oh, okay, okay. I'll put that on the surface. Keep this one going. That was not in the right position, but still it'll work. It's only back there about 42. Well, actually, it's back there 42 feet, but it's in the, in the air. Oh, it's surfing now, so there's no way that's going to catch a fish like that. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah. Head shakes. Gotta like that. That would be crazy if that one got hit on the surface surfing like that. Okay. Bring it around. The other side of this rod. This. Oh, it just came off. Ha <laughs> Okay. Well, son of a gun. 1.86, a little fast, let's just drop it down.
Drop it down. Come on, baby. 1.76. 1 1.7. Fish on right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. This fish means business. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, missed him again. Come on. There we go. Right in the net, baby. Yes. Woo, another nice one. Oh, another nice size. Oh, there he is. There he is. Maybe he's still on there. Nope, it's another one of those. Another one of those. Uh, I think those are pike minnows or something. Squawfish. at 100 feet, zero to 100 feet. So that's, those are trees down there. And then there's a school at uh, just above 50. Here, let me show you. And you can see I, I've been going just back and forth on this one line catching fish. These are trees and of course fish. Some say it's kind of a rookie move to, to keep your fish finder so it's marking, you know, showing fish instead of, you know, the marks, like a boomerang mark. But, you know, I don't care. How petty is that? If you want to put fish on your fish finder when they get marked, put fish on your fish finder. It's your freaking fish finder. If you like fish, put fish on it. Don't listen to those people who are snobs and think you're, it's below them to, you know, to put you know, fish on your uh, fish, you know, to show fish on your fish finder. It's stupid. Don't care what other people think. Just do what makes you what makes you happy. When it comes to this kind of stuff, it doesn't matter what other people say. There's one on the surface rod again. We have an 0 for 6 record on the surface rod. Let's see if we can break our losing streak with this one. Ah, another beautiful fish. Look at that, huh? Me think about that. These are awesome. This guy here is number nine. All we need is one more and we will have our 10 fish limit. I'll tell you though, whew, I have lost 30 fish at least. But that's the nature of the beast when you're fishing for kokanee. Lost a couple right at the boat, well, actually three or four right at the boat, a couple out there, 30 or 40 strikes that never hooked up. Knocked one off with my net. <laughs> actually, might have been two I knocked off with the net. Oh, man. Oh, well, that's life. One more fish, it's all we need. Okay, now this could very well be the final fish, if it's a good fish. Feels like a decent fish. I'm gonna kick the boat in neutral so I'm putting less pressure on this fish. it up over here unsuspectingly 
until I can get it right in the net. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay, well, we finished off the day with a decent fish. That's number 10. We ended up with 10 nice kokanee. Actually, nine nice kokanee and one small one. I know I've said it before. You know, these things aren't very big, but they are sure fun to catch. I mean, these are beautiful fish. And they taste really well too. I'm gonna smoke these up. 